What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to pick what is the best way to sell your coaching, consulting, and courses. This is going to be a video unlike any other on the internet. Trust me, I've seen so many, but this is a question that I get all the time where people are saying, how should I sell my coaching? Because this person says to sell it this way, this person says to sell it this way. Should I do low ticket? Should I do a webinar? Should I do a VSL? What should the price be? Should I offer payment plans? All of this is um, very confusing because everyone out there has the method that worked for them and was the, cr the thing that cracked the code for them, and it must be the solution for you too. So buy their course on how to do it, and I'm gonna start off by saying most of it is total bullshit, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly why, and by the end of it, you're going to know a direction that is more clear than any other video will point you to online, I swear it. If you do not feel like I deliver on that promise, I want you to smash that dislike button. I want you to block this channel. I want you to tell YouTube everything it needs to know about why my channel sucks if I don't live up to that promise because I am so positive by the end of this video, you are going to say, okay, now I know what to do more so than anyone will tell you, all right? So to start off, let's go over just some of the popular models models out there of what you could be doing, all right? So of course, you could be running ads to, man, why isn't this snapping? I want this to snap to the grid so it looks a little prettier. Whatever, you guys are gonna deal with it. Ads to a landing page to a webinar, okay? Gotta do webinars, right? Webinars make people millionaires, guys, okay? Write this down, you need to do a webinar, of course. Right, and then there's a like a, a timer, um, and and then that timer uh, you sell like a, a 997 course, right? Maybe you offer it on some payment plans, right? Boom, the the millionaire model that right there, guys, it makes anyone a millionaire. It's applicable to any business, you know this. Or you could do you know another thing that's applicable to 100% of businesses because. This guy made uh, a bunch of money selling his uh, marketing program. So if, if you want to sell a, a course on how to play guitar, it should work for you as well, right? Just plug and play with his basic template. So you do an ad to a VSL. A VSL is basically like a, a 15 minute webinar. Uh, and then you're going to sell like a, a call from it, all right? This is a phone, obviously. That's a phone right there. It's not a banana. So um, you're gonna sell them on a phone call and then you're gonna sell a, a high ticket offer. You could do it that way as well. You could also do like a $7 low ticket uh, ebook and then that will have a uh, $27 OTO, a one-time offer, right? A one-click upsell that they can do and then that will um, get them onto like a $2.97 uh, per month after that and um, you know this is this is the, the best model obviously because it worked for some random person on their random business and um, you know you could do so many things you could do you could also do a free uh, course you could do a free ebook and then you know email sequence and then um, and then that could all you know sell your uh, $1,500 uh, program here and then like that that's what works right now which one of these is best this one has made people millionaires this one's made people millionaires this one's made people millionaires that one's made people millionaires the other thing to note though is that all of these have also made negative 10 plus thousand errors all of them have made negative 10 thousand or more dollar error negative you know what i'm saying so the like ask me how i know and um there there's plenty of people who have not made these models work despite buying a course on how to do it despite following it to the t using their email templates all right and the reason why is because anyone trying to sell you a cookie cutter template on how to do things online is not going to work and even when I was with my company, I, I sold Cutco knives for a number of years, 
and we would go to business conferences and I would learn how to sell Cutco knives from people who sell the exact same product as me in the exact same way, but the fact that their personality was different than mine and the fact that they lived in a different city uh, with different average income and different types of shows that they worked made it so that even the things that they would teach me, someone selling my exact same product in the exact same line of work, a lot of the things that I would learn at conferences would not work for me. So even within a company where everyone is doing the same thing, a lot of information is not copy paste, all right? It's just not. You can't say, hey, this is a line that I say and you guys should say it too. You can take the psychology of those lines, but it just even with that kind of information, it does not translate um, you know, very well. And in this situation, like maybe someone here, be, because they did this in 2018, because they were good on video, right? They were good on video. That was also another reason because they were already a good copywriter, because they already knew website design, because they were already a good video editor and they could do a great webinar and they had done webinars before and they knew what they were doing and they knew all the technicals of setting up a timer page with all the email follow-up sequence. And um, because they were selling a how to start a business course on how to make a hundred grand, that's why they were able to sell a 997 course. Should you sell your course on how to play the drums through the same method in like, oh, it's now it's 2024 and I'm selling a course on how to play drums. I'm not good on video, but I guess I got to make some video ads because that's what he told me to do. Now you're doing things that aren't playing into your skill set. Uh, time is a big factor with this, okay? Like, Really, um, a lot of these marketing methods, they, they only work for a certain amount of time um, be, before they get saturated to the point that you would need to do it perfectly. Like just to, to talk about this model right here, this method only works with perfect execution. From 2024, from now on, this method works with perfect execution only. 2015 to 2018, you could do okay execution and, and make it out all right. From now on, you better have the most perfect webinar with amazing testimonials. That would be the other thing, right? This person who did it in 2018, let's say they had amazing testimonials. This person is just getting started. They don't have testimonials. There's a lot of things that will make it so you can't do a method that someone else did because you don't have the resources. You don't have the following. You don't have the branding. And it's just not based off of what you're great at. Maybe you're a great writer and you're not as good on video. Then you should be doing a marketing method that is more catered to your talents in writing. Okay, so basically the point that I'm trying to make, I could make this, I could keep going, I could keep showing you all these different methods. The thing is that all of them work and all of them have the chance not to work. So the first thing you need to know is that you buying someone's course that is, especially if it's do it yourself and you don't even get to talk to anyone, is not going to work. It's not going to work for sure. Okay, because you just cannot learn these things in a template. How you should sell your specific program to your audience with your skill sets, with the amount of time that you have, with the amount of money that you have, with the amount of experience in the industry that you have, with the amount of branding that you do or do not have is all a completely different answer. So the great news is what you were thinking of how you were going to sell your program before you got exposed to all of this is probably a lot closer to being correct, okay? And I'm someone who, you know, I'm a coach, right? So like, um, but but I'm a coach with ethics. So like really, if you wanna make a lot of money in the coaching and course industry is, is have no ethics and tell people that you promise this method will work. I promise this method will work. It worked for me. So of course it will work for you, even though they know they're selling a bullshit dream. Okay. The way to make a ton of money in coaching very quickly is to have no ethics. So I don't care about that. I'm only going to tell you what is going to be the correct answer for you. And I probably can't give you the exact answer today, but what I'm going to start off by doing is telling you of the questions you you need to ask yourself in order to figure this out. The first one is you're going to base, you're going to start with your offer of what you want to sell people. So you want to figure out how would you make at least $100,000 in a year selling your offer? Because a lot of people are like, okay, what if I do the $7 thing and then um, I'll do like a $1,000 thing or maybe I'll do like a $5,000 package. 
you need to do the math and see what you would need to do to get a $100,000 year based off of like a 1% conversion. So like if you show your uh, $1,000 offer to 100 people that one of them would buy, right? So you would say, okay, with a $1,000 offer, I would need to sell 100 of them to get to $100,000. And then based off of that, I would need an audience size or at least to pay for ads to show my offer to um, at least 100,000 people. Now, this kind of gives you the clarification of how important the size of your audience is to start or how much money you're going to have to spend on ads. So I'm going to leave it at that right now. But just like once you've got like a general price point of what you're thinking, do the math on how much it would take you to sell at least $100,000. Of course, you might be more ambitious to sell more, but you should at least be able to conceive a $100,000 a year with what you're selling, even at the beginning. Um, otherwise, it's probably not going to be uh, the best way to do it, all right? So that's the first thing. And I'm gonna ask you a question here in a second that is just gonna trump all of these. It's like the end-all, be-all question. Um, but the next one you're gonna ask is yourself is, what do you want to do, all right? People are like, ah, the courses are better, done with you is better, done for you, Uh, in person versus online. What do you want to do? Because if you're not basing your business off of what would give you the lifestyle that you want and then working backwards from there, you are going to create a lifestyle that even though you're a business owner, even though you work for yourself, you don't like it. So there wouldn't be any point to it. So you have to figure out what do you want to do? Do you want location freedom? Is that important to you? Is traveling the world important to you? Because how you would build your business where you very much care about being able to travel while still making money or still being able to work while you're abroad is going to be completely different than someone who says, no, I love meeting up with clients in person and I don't need to travel. I love where I live. I want to meet up with people in the area. I, I'm better at coaching them, right? What It also um, matters what is the best way for you to deliver your coaching. If you're a soccer coach, maybe when you meet up in person with people, you can get them a lot better results than you coaching them online. Or if you're in my circumstance where you teach like Facebook and Instagram ads a lot of the times, then it is better to be on Zoom where we can share each other's screen. It's not good to be at a coffee shop sitting next to each other. It's better to be on Zoom where I can just take control of your screen and you can record the whole thing, right? So there's that aspect too of like, what's the best way to deliver this? So what's important to you? Location freedom? How much is time freedom um, important to you? How much are you looking to work? Do you love to work so you don't mind putting in all the areas do you have another job right now that you can't quit anytime soon i just talked to someone this morning he says he works a job six days a week so he was asking me which method he should do i said well you're definitely not gonna make a video course and try to sell that to the masses because you don't have the time to do that because it sounds like you probably need your off day to go grocery shopping and to you know, meal prep or do whatever you do for the week or go out with your significant other. Like you don't have that seventh day to just work all day. So I I asked him, do you have any time off in the year? He says, yeah, there's two different times of the year that we have two weeks off. So this guy was training soccer programs. So I said, so you don't need to be doing this year round coaching. Like you don't have the time for it. You don't have the time slots in your calendar to even possibly offer the coaching. Like you need to do like a summer program where it's just like a week long boot camp on the the times that you have those two weeks off from your job like that's that's all that's even possible for you to do so a lot of people don't consider like what is even possible with your current work schedule do you have other businesses that you're running do you have another job and um you know is of course there you'll probably go through a period where you're just working way more than you want to do so that you can get to a time where you're not working as much but these things need to be considered into what method you choose and when you buy a course they don't care about where you're at in life they don't care about how much money you have either so a lot of these methods too they might be based more on organic marketing 
versus paid marketing. So that would be another thing to consider. Do I have more than a couple thousand dollars to spend on advertising to figure out you know, if my offer works or not? Or would that really put me in a, a bad position and I need to figure out what's the best way to get sales for free? In that case, I'd probably recommend you go with a DM strategy or a YouTube strategy rather than a paid ad strategy because of the amount of capital that you have. Because there's always a way to do it, whether it be for free or with paid ads. Um, and which one is better? Which one is better for you is always going to be the answer. This is so situational. And I've run everything. I've done everything now. I've consulted over 250 businesses and they all are doing something different because the right answer is, is gonna be something that no one else is doing right now. Okay, I'm gonna let you know that right now. The, the right answer, the perfect answer for you is not going to be a copy paste of what anyone's doing right now. It might have moving parts that are very similar to other businesses, but it's going to be designed differently. And it's gonna be based off of your skill sets too, right? So that's gonna be the other thing. What's your, what is your best way to deliver content? I like to do video and I like to do audio podcasts more than I like to write. I don't write very well. I also get very distracted. It's not a very good use of my time. Other people might be great at writing. So maybe instead of doing video ads, you do pictures with long form captions because you're really great at writing ads or you do a lot of email marketing because that is where you communicate best with people. Maybe your course is written even. So like a lot of this needs to be based on your skills skill sets too. The next question that you're going to ask yourself are it is um you know as far as the customers that you're considering targeting. So I'll stick with the example of the soccer coach that I talked to this morning. He could either sell soccer coaching programs to like 13 year olds or he could sell it to 18 to 23 year olds that are trying to go pro and they're already maybe even making some money they're maybe even already sponsored so another great question to ask yourself if you're trying to figure out who your target audience is is are they targetable and how are they targetable because in this case the people under 18 you cannot target them with facebook and instagram ads if 18 is the minimum age that they have to be to see ads so it is always quite the disconnect when you are running ads to parents to sell something to their kids. It can be done, but it's definitely just something to take in, in mind here where like I, I told him like, yeah, you should, you should do the marketing to the people who are the same people that are uh, buying the actual program. Otherwise, it's actually quite a bit more difficult to convince parents to convince their kids to do something. And then the parent, then the kid to convince the parent to, to spend the money it is just um, you have to spend a lot more on marketing to make things like that work. So are they targetable and where? Because sometimes on Facebook and Instagram ads, once you know what your options are for targeting in the system and how it works, which if you don't, uh, watch my new video that came out last month on understanding Facebook ads manager and it will just explain what every button does. And that's gonna be the best way for you to just understand the capabilities of what you can do on Facebook and Instagram ads, but maybe you can target them on YouTube ads more effectively. And that's why it's important to really have a base level of knowledge of how all these platforms work so that you can make your, your best decision. Or you could just talk to someone who already knows all of these things and I can just give you the answer immediately. You can just tell me who your target client is and I'll tell you all of your options for effectively targeting them. But taking that into consideration is great because what you're really trying to do here is close doors, not look for the open one. Because right now you're thinking, okay, I could do this, 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 and I could sell it to this person or this person or this person at this cost or this cost. You're trying to say, what is the right way? And this is not the right question to ask. You should be trying to say, okay, let me close as many doors as I can. And then once I'm left with a few remaining doors, then you will pick which path that you want to go. So the gentleman that I talked to this morning, I said, okay, the fact that you only have these four weeks off per year is already closing the door on all of these different methods that are gonna require way too much time for you to do because you, you don't even have time to do the coaching calls that you would have to do in, in all of these scenarios without hating your life at least. So let's close the door on all of those. How big of an audience do you have 
right now? Not that big of one. Cool, let's close the doors on all these low ticket offers. Do you have a bunch of money to throw at ads? You've got a, a decent amount of money. Okay, cool, let's close the, the door on some of these other ones, right? And we went through these questions and then I said, okay, cool. Well, on those four weeks that you have off per year, based off of how that lines up with the soccer season, what could you even potentially sell people at that time? Because if the soccer season is already going versus if it's in the off season, that will also change the answer of what he could even possibly sell. And what we did was just closed as many doors as we could so that he was only left with a couple options. And it's like, okay, cool. Do you want to do this one or this one? because these are your two options. And you probably only have a couple options uh, when you really do it this way, when you close doors and uh, you know more look at it from that side. Now, here is the question that is the end all be all for what you should sell, because it is not any kind of template, as you already know, it, it, it is based on one thing. It is based on what people will actually buy, okay? Now, here is the secret hack to figuring that out. Your dream client is you however many years ago. So you need to have the awareness of what you would have bought. And this is how I figured out my first working coaching offer because I did spend over $10,000 on ads to try to sell a 997 course through a webinar. And I sold one of them to someone who already knew me. So it didn't really work. Then I spent another five to $10,000 on the VSL method to sell a 697 course and it didn't work. And then I said, you know what? What would I buy three years ago? Because really, I'm trying to sell to myself three years ago. And I said, I would have bought 497 a month, cancel any time. And I said, yeah, that's what I would have bought. Like, if I'm being real with myself, every $1,000 course, like most of them I didn't buy. Like, I didn't even buy a lot of these things that I'm trying to sell, like when they were trying to sell to me. So what am I doing? I would have bought though 497 a month for weekly calls, cancel any time. I'm like, that, that is what I would have bought. And then I started doing that. And instantly, I'd had customers. I, I changed my offer to what would I have bought three years ago in, in this case. And some of you, it might be eight, 10 years ago. You got to be able to put yourself in that perspective and say, what would I have bought based off of what I would have needed and what my financial situation was and what I was willing to part with? And what would I have been excited to buy? What would I have been more more than happy to sign up for and say, yeah, like that sounds like a great deal because there's this very common uh, saying in the market right now that is total BS and it's charge what you're worth, okay? Charge people what you're worth. The reason why this has worked is because we just went through a phase where people believed everything that they heard online. So when a program was $5,000 or $10,000, they said, damn, it must be worth it. And then what happened is they bought that $10,000 program and then they bought a $20 book from Alex Hormozzi that they thoroughly enjoyed more. And then they said, oh, I guess when it comes down to digital education, that uh, the cost isn't always conclusive about how good something is online. The experience of the market right now is that every one of them has, has bought a course that they wish they didn't buy. All right. So that is what you need to know with trying to sell courses, coaching, um, done for you services, agency work. Everyone you're trying to sell to has already had a bad experience with someone else. So it's not it, like it was at the time in like 2015 to 2018 where people had not bought a course yet. So the fact that someone came along and said, this course is going to teach you how to make a hundred grand a year and quit your job. And then they said, oh my God, it's only a thousand dollars. That's insane. Boom. Check out. And then they didn't make it happen. And now they're like, okay, hold on. I got to be very weary about the next thing that I buy. So for that reason, you need to be able to ask yourself, what would, would you have bought? And is probably going to be something that no one's doing. And it's probably going to be something that you're going to get some crap for. Because I did a bunch of coaching calls with people, like all the free calls, right? Like people would reach out to me. Hey, Derek, we saw you sign up for the webinar. Did you want to book a call with us? I'm like, sure. I always did it. And then they said, what are you selling right now? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm selling $4.97 a month, cancel any time. And they'd say, that that's pretty laughable, man. I mean, you really should be uh, doing $3,500 you know, or five k because like that's what you're worth. Okay, the, the fact that that may be what the course is worth is great. That's great. People need to feel like they got an awesome deal though. And guess what? They're not buying it. So sure, it's worth $5,000, but they're not buying it at $5,000. So should the cost be based off of what you feel like it's worth as the coach? Or should the course be based off of what people spend money on? 
It should be what the customer spends money on, and it's what the customer spends money on happily, okay? And a lot of times that's gonna be a lower cost. So at the end here, like I'll even tell you something I'm gonna sell, I don't care. I really don't care if you buy it or not. Like I'm trying to give you as much value in this video that you don't even need to book a call with me. But I'll let you know right now at the end of this, I'm gonna tell you a price for something that is not based off of what I feel like I'm worth with all my experience. I'm gonna give you a price on something that is totally based off of you know, what would be an insane deal to you. And, and that's it. Because why would the marketing doesn't work when you have to just like close, like hard close people and put them on credit and put them into debt just to, uh, because you're worth it because, because of whatever you're telling yourself. And this is just like the thing you got to figure out what is a great deal for people because a great deal is what keeps them coming back. And if you screw people over, you can't ever sell it to them again. And that's why there's a lot of people like Kevin David, Dan Locke, um, even Tanner Chidester is kind of uh, like that. And, um, you know, like I could go on and name a bunch of people. I'm not trying to pick a bone with anyone because all these people are, are millionaires, but they also really struggle to sell anything anymore because they overpriced everything that they ever sold. Taylor Welch would be another one, Traffic and Funnels. They sold so many things. Oh, and Pete Vargas, fucking asshole, okay? I'll, I'll pick a bone with him any day. This guy sells like a $20,000 program on how to be a public speaker, which is something that very few people should ever consider consider doing. It's a, an insane line of work and it's a, the hardest business model I've ever seen. And he was selling it to like, he told everyone at that conference, yeah, you should buy it. You should buy it. Yeah, for sure. What What's your experience? You just got out of high school. Yeah. Don't go to college. Buy my $20,000 program. Okay. These assholes will just try to, they make a lot of money by telling everyone that it's what they should buy. All right. And that's just like total bullshit. And now what happens is they get rich over a couple years and then they can't sell anything in their name becomes mud. So don't follow these people that can't even sell anything anymore that have ruined their reputation and now they're telling you yeah follow the path follow the path that i'm on because look at where it got me in three years yeah where to get you three years after that you can't even do anything now and people don't like you right so you just gotta you really gotta have the bullshit detectors up in this market uh, and, and I wish it wasn't like that, but this is just the world for you. And the cool thing is, is that if you can come around and be the ethical person that people trust, then you're gonna make a long-term career out of it. And you might not get rich quick, but you'll get rich slowly and you'll get rich securely. And you won't have to worry about, like even like Grant Cardone is about to go through a phase where people are like, you don't actually know shit, do you? Like you're just a good bullshitter. And that's like my honest take on him too, even though I've totally thought he was the man for so many years. And then you just kind of, as you get more and more experience, you're like, oh, you're just really good at selling a dream. And you're really good at having all of this crazy confidence that you are the best. And, um, and it's just kind of ego-based selling and uh, narcissism works in, in sales, all right? And um, it, it just doesn't work long-term, especially when the entire world opens up to it. So I want you guys to do this, like just to, to conclude here, what you should do, you need to ask yourself all those questions, like how much time do you actually have? How much money do you have? Where, where are your skills best? Maybe you're really good on the phone. Then you should be getting people on the phone and, and closing them there. Uh, maybe you're kind of scared of that. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it, but take that into consideration. So the, the method that you're gonna choose is gonna be based on that. Then what you're gonna sell is going to be mostly based off of what would you have bought? And it might not look like anything that anyone is selling right now. It might be a price point that is like really low compared to what a lot of the market is doing. You're like, man, like no one's doing a dollar thing. Okay, just because no one's doing it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Um, you're like, what if I just did this for a dollar? Like get get a coaching call for a dollar instead of a free coaching call. What if I did that? It, like th th maybe a horrible example for most of you. Um, because any example I'm gonna give you is going to be horrible for most of you. You have all of these moving parts, all right? You just gotta know about the moving parts. There's the phone call, there's the you know, there's the order page, there's the um, a webinar, there's um, you know, eBooks. You, you have all of these tools and then are, they fr are you making it free? Are you making it paid? What's the order? So you determining that customer journey is still going to be what would I have bought? What would, how would I want to be sold to? Because you are your dream customer however many years ago. 
And once you can crack the code on how that person would have bought, then you will have the answer. And you should really just do this however you feel is right is going to be a better answer than you buying expert secrets or any of these things. Like all of these things are so great to learn from as long as you know that their path is not yours. Their path was their path for their thing. And there's gonna be similarities, but it will never be the same thing, all right? Success rhymes, but it doesn't, it's not It's not templatable, all right? It's really not templatable. Um, now, to conclude here, if you say, all right, I now have a lot of great information. I'm so confused at what to do. What I can do for you, so what I do is a monthly coaching program where we talk once a week, and then you can uh, either text me or DM me an unlimited amount of times during the week in between. It's not a thousand bucks, not 2000 bucks, whatever. It is 597 per month, cancel anytime. You might just need one month. And that is my ultimate goal, to teach you as fast as I possibly can. If you wanna figure out, I don't know how to sell my coaching method. This is what I can do. Like These are all my skill sets, this is my time. Just give me all of this information and I will compile it to you uh, into the, the method that will give you the absolute best chance to make it. I can't promise anything, of course, but um, I will tell you the method based off of everything you have going on in your life and what you're selling and who your target client is, what the best way to sell your coaching pro program is, and we will work on it and we'll do a live call once a week. And after the first month, my goal is that hopefully you don't need me anymore, but I've had people stay for 10 months before because I know what I'm doing and I've done this for over 250 different businesses at this point. So I, I can tell you if, it, if it's TikTok, if it's Google, if it's YouTube, I will know the answer and I'll be able to tell you this. And this will save you years of your life. It will save you tens of thousands of dollars in ad spend. Don't try to do this on your own, but don't try to do this with someone else's success path. Let's make your own. So go ahead and uh, you know shoot me a DM at Derek Fidel on Instagram, uh, or I'll leave a link below for you to just book a free call with me to start. So you can just kind of tell me like, here's a little bit about what I'm doing and just make sure we're a good fit. I'll give you some information so that you can say, holy shit, like, uh, yeah, I just learned more in like five to 10 minutes than I have, you know, from anything that I've ever done. And I'm gonna give you very specific information to you. So go ahead, book a free call below. Let's start there. And then we'll make sure that we're a good fit um, for that 597 a month, cancel any time. And uh, that should be exactly what you need because that's what I based it on. I didn't base it on what am I worth, 5K, yeah because I have all this experience and I have 4,000 YouTube subscribers. So I, it's based off of what is it an insane deal for you and what has gotten people results consistently. So I hope you take me up on that. Otherwise, subscribe, smash the like button, leave comments below and I'll reply. I appreciate you. Good luck out there.